Today's video, Joker Goes Mini, as we have a look at the new DC Collectibles DC Designer Series, The Joker by Brian Boland. From the pages of the Eisner Award-winning graphic novel Batman the Killing Joke, acclaimed artist Brian Boland's iconic rendition of The Joker gets an 8.22-inch polyresin design series mini statue. In a limited edition of only 5,000 copies, the statue is sculpted by David Gerard brings to life one of the most seminal interpretations of the Clown Prince of Crime to ever come to comics. DC Designer Series statues are based on art from the comic industry's top creators and recreate their vision in vivid 3D detail. Let's grab the tape measure, figure out how tall the statue stands. I think the packaging touted it at 8.22 inches. Let's grab the Measuretron though, put it right to the top of his fedora. The Ultra Measuretron says 8.3 inches. Now, to be fair, 8.2 and 8.3 isn't that far off. It's just a matter of how high I put the tape measure. So 8.22, I think, is a safe bet. How about that in centimeters? Centimeters, the figure or statue stands at 21 centimeters, 21.1 centimeters to be exact. When you get the statue, it comes disassembled and you get yourself a circular display base featuring the classic Joker's logo down below. We're gonna do some comparisons in a second. Spin it around on the back. This is an artist proof number 28 out of the 5,000 copy release. Here you are also treated to a couple of felt or rubberized feet to prevent scratching on the underside when you are sliding this around or putting this down on a surface. Last thing you certainly want to do is not scratch the surface. As for Joker, he comes with a larger peg and a smaller peg, which you can tell right off the bat which goes where. Slides very easily into place. And there you have the finished statue completed. Now looking up way up. This is obviously not the first time we've had a look at this statue. This is the original released Killing Joke Joker, also released from the folks over at DC Collectibles. We'll do some comparisons in a second, but you can probably see right off the bat that the mini version of this statue is about half the height of the regular release. The mini version of the Joker Killing Joke is essentially the same as the larger version, but they have taken a few of the luxuries um, just limiting some of the things that could potentially be broken on the Joker, for example, uh, one of which being the the side strappings here of his jacket. I'll show you that in a second when we compare it to the larger one. The larger one actually has separate pieces of the belt that drape out from the jacket. Here they've kept everything really close, sculpted right to the jacket itself, which makes more sense because of the smaller nature of it. The last thing you certainly would not want to do is break this. Um, again, we looked at the display base already. Love the classic Joker printing here. Now, the larger statue does have the same stand, but you'll see in a second that this part is actually embossed. The outlining of the lettering is embossed into the base. See, here's the larger one. You can see how it's been outlined. One thing, unfortunately, though, where this smaller one benefits is because this is outlined the way it is, the Joker's face here is a little more cruder. 
I kind of would have liked that the larger original release would have had the outlining around the lettering, but then the Joker's face would have just still been printed inside this in, inside the O. So then it wasn't going to look as slightly distorted because all the areas of the black are are parts that have been etched into the base here. Talking about the belt areas, though, I'll spin the figure around. This was something I mentioned in the review. We'll grab this figure here, the smaller statue, and you can see the comparisons between the two. The placement of the belt is roughly about the same, although this one here, again, is molded right to the jacket. The original release, as you can see here, if I just spin it around to the side, the belt portions stick out. This is something I was extremely worried about when I first got the statue. It's still incredibly worried because there's not really much that's keeping it from breaking, really. So I have to be very, very careful when having a look at the statue. The other thing you'll probably notice as well when you look at the two side by side is that the coloring seems a little bit different. The one here on this side is a lighter shade of purple, almost borderlining, almost like a violet. This one here, however, does have some extra red tones to it, giving it a slightly more darker coloring. Um, it does, as you look at it here, you can see that there's almost even a hint of yellow or orange that's hitting some of the surface colors of the purple. Here, it's a much more matte presentation, the original release Joker. This one here definitely gets a little bit more extra coloring. I feel like the coloring does add a little extra oomph to the figure, but I think in all honesty, I kind of prefer it in more of a matte treatment instead. Here is what the original head sculpt looked for the Killing Joke Joker, the larger sized statue. And here is what we get with the smaller mini version. It's really about the same, although I do notice that there's a more contrast of the whites and the grays and the airbrushing around the eyes to this one right here. This one kind of gets a little bit more brown treatment around the eyes. It's not quite gray and the whites are a little bit more blended into this color that it seems a little bit more of the same color. Whereas this one right here, you definitely had a lot more of the whites, especially showcasing around the cheeks, around the areas of the chin, and around the bridge of the nose. If you look at the poses between the two statues, the smaller to the larger, you'll see one thing that's different. Even though the poses are identical in the way that he's holding the camera, Joker's finger right here is levitating over top of the snap. This one, however, has it further back, and they probably have done this once again to prevent smaller things like the finger from breaking off. But instead, it kind of takes away from Joker not quite looking like he's about to take the photo. Instead, it looks like he's just looking through the viewfinder here. Another comparison between the two is his little tied-off tie. Here, it's a separate piece that sticks out from his collar. It's over top of his jacket collar. Here, on the other hand, the tie is underneath. Again, something that they probably have done to prevent some smaller components from breaking off the statue. It's not that I'm necessarily nitpicking this statue. Simply, I'm just showing you the difference between the smaller version and the larger version behind. And certainly, I don't want to make this entire review a comparison between the smaller and the larger version. Again, the benefit of these pieces is the fact that they're smaller. They take up a whole lot less space. By contrast of to the larger scale Joker that we had already looked at on this channel, this one's smaller. This one fit in a lot of other places that the larger one simply just can't. This is good for if you have small apartments or small dwellings, really, that you don't have a lot of space to put out a collection. You can still benefit from having really neat-looking, well-sculpted collectibles by DC just in a space that can afford something like a smaller shelf, a smaller bookcase, for example. And just because DC took some shortcomings when it came to trimming off things that could potentially break on this statue doesn't take anything away from the sculpt, which is first and foremost. You're obviously going to be picking up these for yourself because you really like the head sculpts and the overall sculpts of the body. And I have to admit, though smaller, yes, though they did trim off some things, yes, it is still a really bang-on likeness to Joker from The Killing Joke. His smile is sinister. I love the way that they've got the one squinted eye. I don't know if you can even make out there, but there is the eyeball still in there. It's not simply a case where they've just slitted the eye with a line. There's actually a working pupil inside of that socket. Of course, most, if not all, the attention is drawn to one Joker's sinister eye that's looking through the viewfinder right here, about to take his photo. Again, I don't feel like the paint is as good, in all honesty, as the, as the larger version. I have to admit, though, that's still a really good sculpt of Joker. 
So I had a look at the DC Designer Series Joker from The Killing Joke a long time ago. We already had a look at that statue. But the last thing I wanted to do when the opportunity arose to have a look at the mini version of the statue was to do a comparison straight comparison from one to the other because I knew that the taller statue was going to be the better superior statue. It had to happen because it was a taller statue. It can afford a little bit more extra pieces, if you will, added to the statue where the smaller one has to sort of trim those things back. The paint I found is also a little bit better on the taller statue because it can afford to do, it adds a little bit more space to work with. The contrast of the whites to the gray scales work a little bit better on the Joker's face on the taller statue. The last thing I wanted to do though was to diminish, if you will, the smaller stature of this Joker by comparing it to the larger, but I ultimately had to do that just so that you guys could see the difference between the two. It's always been one of my favorite looks of Joker, and I think getting this in a smaller mini statue is really the best way that DC Collectibles could have gone using an existing, somewhat existing mold that they had. They probably have tweaked a little bit of it, and of course they did have to trim off things like the trench coat straps, for example. They could have had, they, there's no way they could have probably kept that on there without that being a potential breakage risk. Uh, certainly the larger one has that same problem. I could only imagine what the smaller one would have been. So while this one does have a few shortcuts, the benefit of it is it's much more a cost affordable statue and it takes up a whole lot less space. If your biggest issue has always been, and the one kind of strike to wanting to pick up and get into a statue collection is I just don't have the space. DC Collectibles is really answering that with these mini statue releases. You get really all the benefits that the larger statue has, just a smaller scale. You can put this on a desk, you can put this on a bookcase, you can put this in many other places that the taller statue simply just couldn't fit. So I think that's the benefit of these mini statues, is that you're really getting the best of both worlds. You're getting a simplified version of the taller statue, but not simplified enough that you feel like it's not as great of a statue, and it takes up a whole lot less space, which is really the best reasoning to want to pick up these statues for yourself. Speaking of picking these up for yourself, the DC Collectibles DC Designer Series Brett Brian Boland Killing Joke Joker Statue, that's a mouthful, is currently available in comic book stores should you wish to pick this one up for yourself. If you've managed to pick up this one or the larger scale Joker, let me know what you think of them in the comments section. We're going to be having a look at some more DC Collectibles statue reviews into the holiday season, as certainly there's some great gift ideas from DC Collectibles as some pretty cool statues and figures are coming out just before Christmas comes around. So stay tuned for those videos. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.